You're listening to FamCast, the For All Mankind podcast, with your hosts, the competitive spirit, Trey Simpson, our own devil's advocate, Tim Weber, and the hopelessly optimistic, Trevor Jorgensen. This is FamCast. Hey, everyone, and welcome back to FamCast. This is episode 65, and we are here finally with our Borderlands 3 review. It's, uh, and Tim, you, you can, uh, I'm sure you can agree with me here. It's taken some time. It has a lot more than I thought. Like <laughs> I thought I was going to be able to like bust this out in like one or two days. <laughs> nope. Yeah, that is not the case. Now, granted, um, you know, just to kind of chat about it a little bit before we dive into the review, we definitely could have, if we wanted to, we probably could have plowed through the main story, not done any of the side quests or true. collectibles, challenges, or have um, responsibility. Yeah, go to work, I suppose. Right. Um, but no, I, I think we both kind of had the same same mindset that we're we're completionists. You know, we like mm. doing all the side quests, finding all the hidden stuff, unlocking everything. But then I think once we got to a certain point, both me and you were like, "Fuck it." We're just going to complete the story and we'll go back later. <laughs> right. Like, like all my friends who don't do side missions, like, bro, you're still playing the game. I'm like, I still have things to do. Right. <laughs> I've got so much to do. And uh, I don't. Um, yeah, man. I, I think the biggest push for me that uh, that that caused me to try and get through as fast as possible was just spoilers. I didn't. Uh, I did not want anything spoiled for me, so I'm like, I need to get through as fast as I can now. Right. It's been a whole week. Um, I mean, at this point, a uh, week and a half. I just finished it yesterday. You finished it, I think, two days before I did. Correct. Um, so yeah, that was my biggest fear. Is just, you know how how the internet and Twitter is, and any, any any little thing gets spoiled as soon as the game comes out. So you're right. It's a little late. Um, but it's here, our Borderlands 3 review. Um, so I, to, to kick it off here, both me and Tim are, are fans of the series. Um, I think since Borderlands 1 for both of us, right? Yeah, my, my history of Borderlands is a little bit different just for the simple fact that like when Borderlands 1 came out, that was the same time Fallout 3 came out and I, cho- I had to choose between the Ooh, two. So I okay. chose Fallout 3 and never got big into Borderlands 1 until Borderlands 2 came out. Like a little prior to Borderlands 2 coming out when it got announced, I was like, well, okay, I guess I'll go back and play 1. So that's when I got introduced to it. I was more late to the game because of Fallout, but sure. I... I mean, I still love it nonetheless. Interesting. Yeah, I, I didn't even uh, put those two together. Um, yeah. Mine's mine's kind of interesting too. Not not from that standpoint because I've I've played them all at at release. Um, one, two, pre sequel, and Tales from the Borderlands, um, which I still suggest you get through, Tim. Um, it's got some great story, and especially now that you know some of these characters, right. um, definitely recommend it. Um, but I think mine's a little interesting because I've always played solo. Not to say that that's you know some some rarity. Um, I, I'm sure a lot of people do, but with it being such a, a co-op fo- focused game, mm-hmm. I feel like I've played a completely different Borderlands than you have this time around. Because um, Tim's gone through um, the campaign with Ben, uh, the entire right. campaign uh, campaign with Ben, and other I've gone than through... the very end, Ooh. I didn't finish it with him. Oh because... yikes. Bro, our schedules just weren't matching up towards That's the end. I'm just like, I got to get through this. So I was like, look, I'm sorry. I have to beat this game tonight. Yeah. <laughs> so, That's fair. so unfortunately, uh, I played 90% of it, maybe even 95% of it all the way through with Ben. And then the five, last the last couple bits, I just I had to push through because it just wasn't going to get done. Yeah, that's fair, man. And uh, it's kind of been the same thing with Trey. Our schedules haven't really lined up. Um you know, I played as soon as it went live uh, last Thursday night and Trey wasn't wasn't home yet. Mm. So I, I've been going back a few times like that night. I helped him get caught up in the story and we played through a bit. But then, you know, he's, he's busy doing other things. So I, you know, stayed home all weekend playing Borderlands. So now um, I, I'm pretty far. Well, I beat it. So, yeah, I'm pretty far. Um, uh, pretty much decently far. Yeah. Decently far, <laughs> um, ahead of, of, ahead of Trey, but, um, I think that's one of the, the great things I love about this game, um, is the co-op and the fact yep. that you don't have to be the same level to play together. Correct. I can go back and help Trey out in his story. He could, um, jump into, uh, to any of 
any of ours. Well, yours once crossplay is available. Um, I just love that it's um, that it's cross functional and, and I forget what they call it. I think it's like instanced or phased leveling mm -hmm. um, to where the characters or the the enemies, I should say, are the same level as the uh, the player. Even when you're grouped up, um, like if I'm ten and you're fifty, we can still play together, which I think is pretty cool. It is, and the fact that they give you the option to turn that off is nice too, because there are some people who are like, "Man, I I really enjoyed this," but you know, power leveling in Borderlands Two was a really big thing. Like, hey, yeah. I'm in like you know ultimate vault hunter mode. Let me take my character or this person through to help power level them and all this other stuff. And that, and they give you the option. I I uh, jumped into Casey's game. And he, for some reason, had that mode on uh, when I jumped into his game. And I was like 10 levels higher than him. Yeah. And I got so bored. Oh, yeah. Because I'm like just smacking like level 17s at the time. And I'm like 27. And I'm not getting any XP. And yeah. all the guns dropping weren't going to help me. So I was literally there for nothing other than to help him. Yeah. Um, some people love that, though. Some yeah, people love no, the feeling of, of uh, like being overpowered. Like that's. Oh, I love blowing things up. I just want <laughs> a reward for it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, so it's nice to have that mode now to where you can still do that. And it's not like, it's so there was definitely, there's still a few instances with that to where like, uh, for example, Zach was a few levels higher than us at one point in time and he would jump into our game and I was like 20, he was like 30 almost. And the, the players for him scaled up to only like 26. They didn't actually scale to 30. So I don't know like what the how they deem the level cap. I assume it has to do something with the zone as well as his level, like sure. depending on what zone you're in. Like, But uh, it still worked and it was still better for him because at least the guns that dropped could still yeah. be relevant to him. And the, um, it, it just made me think of the other uh, co-op feature that they have is um, you can either have competitive or cooperative uh, mm -hmm. looting as well. So you can either fight for the guns uh, that pop right. out of a chest or a boss, or everyone can get their fair share of the loot. Which, I mean, realistically speaking, there's no point for competitive loot because if you don't do competitive loot and you're playing with a party of four, that is four chances at that point to get something for somebody. Sure. I think some people just like... It's the same thing in, in, in games like WoW, um, to where some people love the, the master loot to where... Um, like people have to roll for it or, you know, they have their own like in guild currency, like dragon points, right? Um, what, whatever. I guess that um, makes sense. So some people just like, they just like that additional maybe rarity or challenge or whatever it is. I'm not one of those people. No. I, I like the, uh, the cooperative, uh, aspect mm -hmm. behind it to where, um, we each get our own loot. If you get something better than me, that's awesome. Um, you know. Hopefully now, I, I get the same look next time. Now, maybe there's some hidden algorithm in the game to where if you're playing with competitive loot, you there's a higher chance to get legendaries and stuff. Like, I don't know. It, it could make sense, though, right, that that might be a thing. And that's fair. That's because I'll be completely honest. I didn't look into it once they said that cooperative loot was a thing. I mm. already knew what I was going to pick. So I right. I honestly haven't looked too much into it. Yeah. But that that's true. They, they might have put in like an added incentive that maybe it's worth looking into. Um. But yeah, the, the co-op is great. I wanted to, to kind of kick it off with that because that's um, really the the most fun that I've had with Borderlands 3 is when I'm playing with with Trey. Um, right. And I'm looking forward to playing with uh, with Tim as well once uh, cross-platform becomes available. Uh, some point down the line, um, nothing really set um, date-wise, but they have said that they do have plans for it, which is all I need to hear. Right. Um, cause then me and Tim will, uh, will tear things up with Trey and it'll, uh, it'll just be a good time. It'll be great. Um, jumping into the, uh, the story though. And this, this is kind of one that we were kind of reluctant to talk about. We won't give any, any spoilers, um, which makes it kind of hard to talk about the story. Um, but I want to say that I think out of all the, the, um, if I think about the previous stories of, of one and two, um, mm -hmm. and the pre-sequel, mm -hmm. in my opinion, I've really loved uh, the Borderlands 3 story, and I think it's probably my favorite out of all of them, um, really uh, for the overarching theme. I never felt this from the, the other games, um, but this one just has this overarching fe um, theme of family. Um, mm. Pretty much on, on every world that you go to, I feel like um, that family theme is there um, like all throughout the game, and it, it was kind of cool to kind of see that come full circle towards the end. Mm. Um, 
without um again we we won't go into specifics but i i really enjoyed um the comedy throughout the heartbreak um everything so hopefully you guys uh, get to experience it yourselves without any spoilers that's why we don't really want to give any here we know we were rushed uh so we avoided it so hopefully you guys uh, can avoid those too um what, what do you think tim any additional thoughts on the story so i thought the story was very good i enjoyed it um i'd say it's probably the longest of the stories uh, of the, of the of the games but i will say as much as i did enjoy this story and i did uh borderlands 2 is still probably my favorite like overall i think borderlands 2 story is still my favorite i think handsome jack and his whole story arc and and everything that he had to do and and i preferred the finale of the second one as well like i i just thought the second one overall was a better experience for myself in terms of just pure story but yeah. that's just me um, oh for sure gameplay on the other hand, yes, I would say is the opposite. I definitely enjoyed the gameplay of three better. Right, and it, it's kind of crazy, right? Because they, when you think about Borderlands as a as a as a game, it hasn't changed a whole lot from like right. you know core mechanic. It's it's a shooting loot. Right, um, it's a shoot you and go loot. around, you kill enemies, you get better guns, kill bigger right. enemies, get better guns. Right. Um, but there's been some really nice quality of life improvements. But, um, yes. Now, some of them, I'll, I'll admit, some of them I haven't really taken advantage of, and that could just be my play style or my build. Um, for example, they added um, the jump smash and the uh, the slide in this time around. Um, I use the slide a lot. Do you? I do. I and, use the slide a lot. And that could be a weakness on my part, too. Maybe it's something that I would be better in combat if I if I uh, sl- um, you know did more uh, running slides. Um, but I just don't, I don't really use either of them. Yeah, I don't um, ground I, pound very often. The only reason I started doing it seldomly at this point is because of a mod I got. So I, I I'm right there with you with the ground pound. I see the I, I see the potential in it, I guess. But I I've at the very few points in the game am I like at a high enough point where I'm just like I'm coming down to it. Right, know, jump on you. <laughs> yeah, there like, there's I, not too many since you do have to be higher than you know just ground level. Right, you don't really get to use it a whole lot. But I mean, it it's cool that it's in there. Right, because um, like, generally if I have the high ground, I want to keep the high ground I'm yeah shoot you. yeah i'm the same <laughs> like, i'm the same way but um, no, no it's maybe, cool it's a feature it's there there could be some i'm sure it's good for um uh brawl amara players that you know get up mm. close and personal i'm sure that's great for them um i'm sure there's some great class mods for that too i'm sure um, there are just not my play style but that's what i love about it is that i feel like throughout the game i was fed different guns grenades mods and it mm. forced me to change how i played not okay. not not forced in a bad way, but I got to experiment like this legendary gun does this crazy thing that the guns that I usually stick to don't do. So okay. I, I got to try out different guns throughout my gameplay. Mm-hmm. And um, I mean, even last night I was asking you about what your what's your favorite um, manufacturer was. And you were saying Torg. And I'm like, oh, I've never Torg really used COB. Torg. Um, mm-hmm. And I actually got a legendary pistol. I'm like, oh, I'll, I'll try it out. It's a Torg legendary. And this thing shot one bullet and then split into like five missiles. I'm so I'm jealous like, of whatever this is. What what is this? So it's cool that you know you can get some some random guns and it can really change how you play the game from that point on. And I feel like depending on like your build that you're going for, a manufacturer can be a very very key element to that so like for example yeah. my mose is a i know everyone's favorite mose build apparently is this endless mags mose which i've tried it and it's fun but i have more enjoyment out of seeing things explode sure so i'm doing this explosion build with her and uh it's really great because like I, a percentage i think that's 20 percent of the time my bullets will explode and do additional damage on the target right so guns like cov are really really good for me because they have you know, they, they, they constantly shoot and they just overheat, Yeah. but I'm constantly shooting and it's so beautiful to just see instead of just bullets, explosions, just constantly on hitting the target, just, they just <laughs> right. constantly keep blowing up and it's just, it's <laughs> glorious. So that's why COV does really well for me is because I can shoot a lot. Now there are other, other manufacturers where stuff like that works. Um, but like the COV laser guns, like, I don't know if you've seen those yet where it's yeah. just a beam, yeah. bro. It's just constant explosions because it just hits so many times. It's That's phenomenal. Awesome. There's, um, I, I saw this guy fight this boss and he uses one of those laser weapons and it just melts. Like you just see the the boss's health bar go like this, mm. like that mm. speed. I'm like, what are these weapons? So it's, yeah. I mean, it's good to know that it's a COV now. I have to try that out. Yeah. And, and yeah. So 
It's super neat. Um, and I don't know if it's just COV, but all the ones I've found. Uh, the only other one I found was a was, how do you say it? Mal Mal Mal. Oh, Malawan. Malawan. I think Malawan had a laser gun too because it switched between uh, a corrosive laser and a radiation laser. So. And Dude, the, there's just options, man. There's yeah, just there options. are so many options. And because I'm the same way, I'm with Amara. Um, I think everyone goes with a brawl build. Like, I think mm -hmm. that's the, the best. But I go elemental because I like seeing all the ticking uh, mm -hmm. elemental damage. Right. It's um, fun. Plus, I get, um, like, with the build I did, I did, I get extra shock damage. So I walk around with an electric uh, shotgun and I'm just. And it, it chains the lightning together, so I'm just like mm. melting people. It's it's nuts. That's awesome. Um, but beyond the like the the cool things that the guns do and the uh, the effects and everything, I love the customization that they've added from just an aesthetic standpoint. Yeah. Um, so you can collect different weapon skins now. Um, so you can really customize your weapon that way, um, and you unlock them for doing different things. Um, and iridium has so many more uses because of that. Like speaking of customization. Yeah. Like you can use Iridium for customizations now, like tons of them. Yeah, it's it's uh, that's changed a lot too. Um, so they even have like little trinkets, uh, like little mm -hmm. keychains you can put on your guns to make each one stand out. Um, but to Tim's point, Iridium, it used to be um, that you uh, use that for just uh, SDUs, right? Yes, for the most part. Uh, that I'm pretty sure actually most part. Like that was the majority was, of it. That was uh, it, if, yeah. if it wasn't all. Um, right. But this time around, you can use it for customizations, whether it's um, like your head skins um, down to the other customizations like gun skins um, right. and the little keychains as well, the, the trinkets. Um, you can use it for guns too, uh, anointed guns. They give some uh, some bonus effects. Um, you can use it for um, something else later in the game that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm, um, you get like mm -hmm. pretty much right at the very end. Um, it's right. so awesome. I won't spoil it here, but definitely one of the uh, the cooler uh, things that you'll pick up um, yep. that you might want to save up your Iridium for. Right. Um, yeah, just overall, I I agree with you, Tim. The The gameplay is definitely the best in the series. They found a way to, um, they, they definitely know their strengths, right? Mm -hmm. They definitely kept with what they're good at, um, but added some fresh elements. Mm -hmm. um, and talking about customization, the the freaking vehicles, man. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's not just a uh, technical or um, outrunner. Like you, you have not only the, um, the cyclone as well, mm -hmm. but you can modify so many different parts. You can modify the the armor, the wheel type, uh, the primary um, weapon, and, the, the primary yeah. weapon, maybe secondary weapon. I don't I don't right. know uh, how far you can customize the weapons. There's I, just a lot. I don't. Um, the paint job, yeah, there's there's a lot, um, which is really cool. I stick with the Cyclone, so I don't know if you can customize the secondary, to be honest. Um, mm. Just because I, I roll around in the Cyclone because it's the fastest. It's the fastest, um, and you play alone most of the time. Yeah, that's what yeah. I run around, and Ben hated it, but that's all that's always <laughs> in this. But we, it was fun because we found a simple way uh, to, to navigate to each other because you can fast travel to the vehicle, right? So if I'm doing something, he needs to get to me. He can just fast travel to my vehicle if I'm out yeah. So there, there's ways you can play around with it. But yeah, no, I think the vehicle customization, they, they've... And no one even asked for that, by the way. I don't think anyone asked for better vehicle <laughs> customization, but they did it anyway because they could. So yeah, I loved the, the added customization just all around. Um, but you made me think of an interesting point that we can maybe transition into. Um because as much as I love this game, it definitely isn't uh, it isn't perfect. And, you know, there's no. definitely a few things that uh, that came up along the the way that um, nothing nothing that uh, make me hate the game or or anything like that. But just a few annoyances, I would say. Um, for example, when you have a if I have maybe three side quests, I can toggle between them uh, when I'm uh, just on like the main screen. Um, yes. But if I open up the map view, I can't toggle between them. So that's, in, in my opinion, I think it's easier to look at the map, toggle between, and then you can see, okay, you can kind of plan out your path, how mm -hmm. you want to go. But without seeing the whole map, you're just going off the mini map in what direction it and looks kind like of the, yeah. the diamond is in. Yeah. Um, like there's definitely a few times I'd go towards where I thought I needed to go, but then find out that, nope, I need to go the exact opposite just to go to where this yeah, diamond is Yeah, because you've got to go up here. and around. Because there's like a wall there that you don't get. <laughs> yeah, so I, I think if, you know, just... And um, just being able to change it to where you can cycle between them um, on the main How the map, map would be looked nice. was cool. Yeah, I love the way that yeah, I like navigating the way the map looked it for sure. was obnoxious at times. Yep, I would agree. Um, and it uh, there were definitely a few bugs that um, I think have gotten better. Um, 
But even last night when I was beating the game, there were definitely some mm-hmm. some game breaking ones. I mean, you actually experienced the same one. Yeah, I took a couple um, of it on my Xbox and everything. The falling yeah. through the ground. Yeah, we. I didn't um, know if it was part of the game. Like, <laughs> right? Who knows? <laughs> it just might be part of it. And the, it's interesting because I played on PC and Tim played on Xbox. We both got this issue, and uh, a large number of other people did too, where we beat this boss, and once the cutscene ends, you just fall right through the floor. Um, and you keep falling and you can't do anything. You can't, uh, give up to go to the the nearest checkpoint. Um, you just have to quit the game and start over. And it's unfortunate because most people get legendaries from boss fights like that. Um, I was lucky enough to where I I could go back to my lost loot, um, which is another cool addition to where if you didn't pick something up, um, there's a small container on the ship to where it gives you, um, you know, some of the most recent loot that, that dropped and, Ideally, you want to clear that out so more loot gets added. Um, right. You can even expand it with SDU. I forget so many times, though. Yeah, me too. I, I'll be honest. Because if, if it's worth picking up, I usually grab it. I pick um, it up, right. Uh, but in this case, it saved me because I got two two uh, great legendaries from it. Um, <laughs> so I was thankful for that feature there. But um, yeah, definitely a few um, a few bugs to, to start it off to where mm. even some side missions I couldn't complete. Um, right. You know, like FPS an NPC. Issue. W- uh, what's that? fps issues on consoles was really bad yeah times. i've i've heard that you know the fps especially with uh with split screen i've heard split yes, screen was kind of rough was apparently terrible um and luckily I, I think when you did it you were playing lan uh like we yeah did. we had a big group of us well a big group we had three of us here but we all had our own xboxes and everything so luckily well during our experience that day we didn't we didn't really have that issue but even not split screen like they're definitely like menu l- menu issues like when navigating the menu on console i don't know how it is on pc it's laggy at times like even now even like just playing alone it gets laggy yeah. at times. nothing that i've experienced luckily um on, on pc uh performance wise is, has been great menus are smooth gameplay smooth i haven't seen any hiccups it's just been those few bugs uh here and there that have made an, an otherwise perfect experience um just a little just a little frustrating at times all i have to do is you know, exit out and I'm back at the nearest checkpoint. It's right. nothing too crazy. Um, one other thing I wanted to uh, talk about that I've really liked, though, um, just to kind of uh, go back to a positive, is the soundtrack. Um, yeah. I lo- This has probably been one of the more varied soundtracks uh, that I've experienced uh, in, in any Borderlands game. Um, you know, it's anywhere from uh, this jazzy, romantic kind of music when you're fighting a, a wave of enemies. Uh, it's a crazy uh, trap, uh, dubstep music, um, to just regular um, like synthwave style music okay. um, that really um, gives the the appropriate feel for the the planet that you're on. Um, it, it's just very it, it's it's spread out throughout the game, uh, a wide variety of music, and I believe they said it's coming to Spotify, uh, which I'm really excited for. Um, there's been a lot of tracks that I want to listen to. I mean, one of the, one of the coolest ones you hear from the very first boss fight that you, uh, you, you go up against, oh, yeah, that was really against cool. mouthpiece that that was yeah. a cool fight, but also just a, a cool song to, I agree. to play too. Um, yeah, that's, um, I just wanted to make sure I hit on that because I've, I've definitely been blown away by the soundtrack. I agree. That soundtrack is very, very good. So just pro tip for people out there. There's a mode when you beat the game called Mayhem Mode. Okay, it is not Ultimate Vault Hunter Mode. It's different. It's Mayhem. Think of it, if you know Diablo, think about Diablo uh, difficulties, how you can increase those, right? Yeah. Um, so I'm just t- I'm telling people this because if they want to do what we did and be completionist without knowing this, that's fine. But I, I think if I would have known this, I wouldn't have been a completionist until after I beat the game. Because for those of you who don't know, uh, Mayhem Mode, is just a difficulty setting you apply to your current game. Like you're, you're the one that you are in, but you can only get access to it after you beat story. But when you apply it, even on mayhem mode one, all the side missions and all the enemies scale to you. So you won't have that issue where you're doing these side missions that are a little bit lower than you because you're out, because you're over leveling them and you're getting lesser loot. So just tip to those out there, even myself being a completionist, knowing that I probably would have saved the side missions until after I beat the game. Yep, exactly. And um, great mode, fantastic. It, it makes playing those fun, and you get better loot. It's great, great, great addition. Just wish I would have known that. It is, yeah. It is a, a great addition. Uh, bonus experience, uh, bonus um, money, better loot. 
Um, it's a it's a great way to knock out some of those quests that would have been boring otherwise. Right. Um, so yeah, I'm glad we at least saved maybe the the second or the the last third of the game maybe. Uh, yeah. For, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But um, something else to go back to. I, we've got true Vault Hunter mode as well, which yep. is uh, basically like a new game plus version. Right. Um, if you played Borderlands, you know what it is. Exactly. You know, I, I, um, I'll probably, to be honest, I'll probably wait on that until crossplay comes out. That way we can run through that that'd, together. That'd be interesting. Um, I just want a date. I just need to know when to get excited. Yeah. I, when, I just, when do we get, uh, when do we get uh, crossplay? Right. But um, speaking of future content, their first free update is coming ah, yes. um, in just a couple of weeks. Uh, the Bloody Harvest. Um, so they're going to have a completely new map section with um, new loot, weapon skins, yep. uh, enemies. So, I mean, for a first free update, it sounds pretty awesome. Yeah. And um, obviously they have the the paid, um, the, the fuller uh, content uh, patches down the road uh, with the season pass that you can get. But there are four of those coming and. Sounds like they're they're going to be um, you know some of these smaller updates kind of sprinkled throughout. So I'm looking forward to it because yeah. this is a game that I unfortunately, as much as I played uh, two, because that's the one I probably put the most time into, I never really got to play it co-op. So I'm I'm glad that we're we're all landed on this one and we can with crossplay we can finally uh, play it together. Right, and the nice thing is for people who enjoy just like watching the game or maybe that's what they can only do right now is just watching the game if you guys check out people on twitch there's this echo cast thing that borderlands added which allows people the, you the viewers to not only get loot by watching them but you can actually like participate in like i added a a, a, a badass boss to trey's game last night just by yeah. watching him and it was and it came up as my my twitch id and everything and and i got to like i didn't realize how interactive it was man you get to like level them up you get to like oh heal them double his damage like it's freaking crazy just to watch like it's yeah. phenomenal it is totally worth like it, <laughs> just checking out like that was a great addition that again nobody asked for but it's there just for people who just want to watch. Yeah, it's it's definitely the, in my opinion, that definitely sets a new standard for uh, for Twitch interaction when oh, it comes yeah. to games. Being able to send in a, um, a a boss or a powerful enemy and and level it up while you see the the streamer <laughs> yeah. like you know struggling to take it down, or maybe you're on the um, the more generous side and you send them a loot pinata filled right. with with guns or money or, or who knows what. Um, there, there's definitely a lot of cool things with, that you can do with the, uh, the extension. So if you guys haven't already check it out, cause you can get some cool things or you can just mess with your, uh, your favorite streamer, right. um, worth looking into for sure. And I'm excited to see what, what other, uh, games kind of do with this, this new right. interactive paves a, um, a road to some, some great stuff. I agree. Um, with that though, um, I, I want to say instead of, um, Moving forward, instead of giving the, the game a, a score, we decided um, to do something a little different. Um, just kind of make it easy. We do, does the fam recommend this game? Uh, do we recommend it uh, maybe down the road? Like maybe now's not the time to buy it, but maybe you should look into it in the future. Or do we just uh, suggest passing on it altogether? Um, so with, with that being said, uh, since we're foregoing a, a score this time around, um, I'm happy to say that Borderlands 3 does get a fam recommendation. If you haven't already, definitely check this game out. Um, even better if you can check it out with a friend. Uh, I've been playing mostly solo and it's amazing, but I can tell you it's it's 10 times as, as fun when you play with someone else. No, 100%. I agree. Like, recommend it. Uh, if, you, if you're a fan of the Borderlands series, you'll enjoy it. If you're actually new to the Borderlands series, but, you know, you have friends picking this one up because they're friends, you'll enjoy it. Like, the story is, is solid. You don't need to know a whole lot about the previous stuff. Your friends can probably fill you in, but it's a phenomenal game. And you, and, and you just you shoot things and have a good time, 100%. And I told KB, because she's never gotten into Borderlands before either, and I, I told her, you can still enjoy Borderlands 3. You'll yeah. just appreciate it more if you've played the others. That's a like, great way to you know, it. when when characters come back, you you, you know, you'll right. appreciate seeing their faces again. But right. if you don't, then you just don't you don't don't have that appreciation. Like shoot things. Like other loot things. Yeah, exactly. You'll still have the, the fun, like the, the core mechanic of the game. Right. Um, right. So, yeah, you, you definitely won't miss out on on the the core aspect of Borderlands 3. Um, but with that being said, appreciate you guys stopping by for another review. It's definitely a busy fall for us uh, with all these games coming out. Um, so we'll definitely have more reviews coming your way. Uh, but until the next FamCast, we will see you guys next time. Later, guys.
Thanks for listening to FamCast. Be sure to subscribe for the latest episodes and follow us on Twitch, Twitter, and our other socials at For All Mankind.